Okay, back to look at the Torah. We we'll learned the Maimer for Rosh Hashanah on page one hundred six. On top it says Nitzavim. Uh, one hundred six, second column. Okay, the pasuk says Tiko b'Chaydish Shefer. You should blow on the Chaydish, meaning Rosh Chaydish to Shefer. But Kesef when it's concealed, the Yem Chagenu to the day of Yom Tiv Kichek LiYisrael Hu. It's a chayk for the Yidden, Mishpat the like Yaakov. It's a law for the God of Yaakov. So he says, Hine, kol hachadoshim, all the months of the year are called chad shehashana. Like it says, by Nisan, rishin hu lachem, lachad shehashana. So the whole, all the other months are called the months of the year. Masha'en ke'en tishri is called chedr stam. It says here, tiko b'chedr shreifah. Why over here it just says Chedesh, and normally they're called Chodshe Hashanah. Because it's Tam Chedesh, Klal Chal Sa'elmas. It's the Chedesh for all the worlds, Visavus, and Miyayan Liyesh. And their creation from nothing into something, Fishabar Bey Rosh Hashanah, because in the month of Tishri Rosh Hashanah, which is Reish Hashanah, not beginning, but rather Reish, which is Reish Mechad Shokol Hashanah. Kinei. Because you have, like we learned many times, there's time, place, and person. Those are the three things. Time, place, and person. That's Elam, which means place. Shana is time, year. And Nefesh is the person, which is the concept this Russian table is called Ashan. Baharsini Ashan Kulay. It's Elam, Shana, and Nefesh. Just like in the person. There's a reish in a mech in the head and the brain. Where the general chayis of the neshama is revealed. The Rebbe says at the end of Kutei Amorim that the chayis clearly of the person is of the neshama comes into the head and from the head it goes to the whole body. And from there it comes spread out in all the limbs of chayis prati, of individual detailed life. Every limb according to its makeup. Meaning, why is Rosh Hashanah called head? Because just like the head is a life, and from the head it spreads itself out, the chayis, to the entire all the limbs of the person, each limb gets accordingly according to what it needs, like the heart this and the hands this and so on. So the same thing he says, like Rosh Hashanah therefore, in Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, meaning the life of the entire year is drawn down on Rosh Hashanah, and then each day it gets the highest of that particular day. So he says, um, same thing is in Elam Mishan, Elam Bchinas Mokim, and Shina Bchinas Man. So the same thing, just like in Nefesh, just like in the person, it comes into the head first, and from the head it spreads itself out throughout the body. So it is also in time and place. Meaning, Rosh Hashan is the revelation for the general life of the year. And then, from Rosh Hashanah, again, you have general, detail, detail, detail. From Rosh Hashanah, is all the chayis of the year comes down on Rosh Hashanah. From there it goes monthly. To every Rosh Chedesh, which is the head of that whole month. In the meaning, uh, and Cheshven, it comes into the head of Cheshven, Rosh Chedesh Cheshven. Then it goes every day accordingly, Kislev accordingly. Because every month, again, for that month, again, it's Rosh Chaydish, it comes down the life of the whole month. But every month is only the details for that particular month. But Rosh Hashanah, his Chach is Chayis Klali Lechol Hashan. Okay? It goes for the whole year. So very simple. The head gets the chayis of the whole body, and then it spreads itself out. Rosh Hashanah gets detailed chayis for that month. Rosh Hashanah for the entire year. But this is different. What's different? Because uh, Rosh Hashanah looks like Hashem says that you know this is going to happen. Somebody's going to make a million dollars, right? And then every day we dive in, we 
Are we going to change that quality? Can we change it? Make it do you know. You didn't, you didn't listen to the class the other night. <laughs> the Gemara asks a question. One Gemara says, Adam Nidin Bachol Yain. Person is judged every day. Right. Another Gemara says, Mizaynais of Shaladim Ksuvim Leib Rosh Hashanah. All the Parnas of the person is already destined on Rosh Hashanah. So is it daily or is it yearly? So the answer is, the Gemara answers this, but Siddhas elaborates on it. And that is, and Rosh Hashanah, let's say, to use figures, yeah? And Rosh Hashanah, it's decreed in heaven, you're going to make $100,000 for the year. That's the highest of the year, right? Now, every day is judged, how is this money going to be spent? Dr. Bill's fixing a leaky roof or going on vacation or buying a house or this and that. You understand? So... The highest calling me in Rosh Hashanah it said you're going to make 100,000. That's not going to change. No. Well, it's possible to change, maybe, but generally not. But, and then every day it comes down in detail how the money will be spent. Okay, skip the parentheses. And every Rosh Hashanah obviously comes down the new general chayas for the rest, for that year. Why, why, what happens in Rosh Hashanah that this is Gilui? Because Rosh Hashanah is being in Amalchus. Rosh Hashanah, they wish to become king. Even in the highest world. So in Rosh Hashanah, it comes on every year, the new Chiddush, so to speak, the new Chayas for the year. How this revelation will be is dependent on the actions that we do. That's what the Pasik says. Meaning, because Shefer is the one that brings down this Hamshacha. Why? He says, Ubir in Yin Shafer. To explain the level of Shafer and also the Yin Aser Simei Tshuva. Sha'am and Azan the Pasik. Dear Sha'ashem Bihim Matse. That when the Pasik says, Seek out Hashem when he's close, is Aser Simei Tshuva. So the question is, Velama Yamem Ma'elu and Dafke Yimei Tshuva. Why is a Pes Aser Simei Tshuva, the days of Tshuva, more appropriate than any other day of the year? Yeah, but why? That's the question. Why is Hashem found more closer to us in the Sarah Simei Tshuva than he is the rest of the year? Every year day you could do Tshuva. What's unique about the Sarah Simei Tshuva? So he says, malchus malchus It says, from your Malchus comes the Malchus of all worlds. We're going to charge you rent soon. Hello. Bidish Eilimim Lashen Helem. Call Elamim all the worlds, meaning all the concealments, right? Elam is Helam. Shekai dem is Savas Elam is because before the world was created, Hayahu Shmei Bavad the Medrash says, before Hashem created the world, was only Hashem and His revelation. That's it. There was no concealment yet, there was only Gilu. In order to be Yesh Miyayin, Simpson the Helam Er Shafa Ainsar Baruch Hashem concealed and limited and hid the the sort the sustenance of Alokus Shlo Yirak Gilu Malchus of Mavad. It should only be the Gilu of Malchus, meaning a revelation of concealment. Malchus is already connected to world, Malchus is speech, Malchus is creation. So in order to have Malchus kol elomim, to have this level of Malchus, limited level of Malchus to create worlds, it had to be Malchus cho. Meaning, Shemegilui Malchus is Baruch Levad. That from the revelation of Malchus is Chayamim Vekayamim kol elomis. So, Yenim Etachtainim. What do we say in the Pasik? In Ashri. Malchus cho. From your level of Malchus, Malchus kol elam becomes existence of all the worlds. Mean all worlds, spiritual, physical, everything. Which means Malchus, 
is the highest of the entire spiritual universe and physical universe. But this concealment of alukus. Okay, bottom line. In order for world to exist, there had to be a level of tzimtzum. Because if Hashem is revealing his infinite, you cannot create the physical world. Only infinite level will be created. So Hashem had to do what's called tzimtzum. But this tzimtzum is only as far as we're concerned. That's what we're learning Shaykh al in the world, Hashem is limiting himself. The Greek said many times, if I hide behind the curtain for myself, I'm not hidden. For myself, there's absolutely no difference if there is a curtain or there isn't a curtain. The only difference is for the people looking, for the people looking at me, the, then the curtain covers and the curtain doesn't cover. But as far as I'm concerned, there's no difference. When Hashem conceals himself to create a finite world, that's only a symptom as far as we're concerned, that we look at Hashem and we look at the Elohim, you know, there's a concealment. But in reality, there's no symptom by him. Is it, is it more accurate to say that Hashem is everywhere, the filter is on our eyes, on the recipient's eyes? That's what he's saying. Hashem is all over. The only question is how much so we perceive of Hashem. The filter is not on him. The filter is on, on our perception. Yeah, but he makes that too. Right. He also is a filter. He is the filter. Yeah. Like the Pesach says, darkness will not darken for you. You're the first to do kula. Come make kula and nothing exists. So as far as Hashem is concerned, from Hashem's perspective, there is no symptom. Symptom is only for us to be able to perceive a limited level of alokos. But as far as he's concerned, there's absolutely no difference. But he created a sense? Correct. By concealing himself with himself. So he does know. That he, what? He, he knows what he has done. Of course he knows what he has done. He's a very smart man. <laughs> I mean, you just said, as far as he's concerned, there is no concealment. From his perception, there is no symptom. From our perception, there is a symptom. If it, he had to be something from his perception. When the Pasik says, it's a Pasik in Shmuel, it's in Naftar on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, Kikel Deis Hashem. Hashem is a God of Deis, of plural knowledge. So there's Das Elyin and there's Das Tach. There's God's perspective, he exists, world doesn't. There's our perspective, world exists, he def- you have to think about. But it's Kel Deus Havayat. That means these two ap- ideas, these two Deus, are both in Hashem. They're both in Hashem. That means even from Hashem's perspective, there is a concept of symptom which conceals from our perspective. Those are the names of Hashem. I mean, that's why I have a Kenya. That's why, correct. All those names of Hashem. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what we say in davening every day. That the king, which is exalted from me'oz, from always, shubachinus levadi k'mi'oz, that Hashem is the same way now like he used to be. Right? There's no difference by Hashem. Before he created the world. This, at the level of Malchus, is revealed, as like it says, Hashem, Hashem, the king, dresses up in, in royalty. He does as in the garments of royalty, to be called a king. Shekach Oler Bitsein. Why? Why does Hashem need this? Because by definition, He doesn't need it. Why in the world would Hashem want to hide Himself? Why can't He just be what He is and not create a world? Because that's not what He wants. He wants to do it with Because Kach Oler Bitsein is bar. This is what Hashem wants. Lahaylam olahaster er v'shafein tzav baruchu to conceal godliness. 
that world should be created with the descent of levels to the extent it comes down all the way in the physical world where the person lives why did Hashem make this total concealment to transform darkness to light and then it will be the advantage of light that comes when darkness is transformed to light so the Altarev is explaining the whole concept of Simtsum is in order because this is what Hashem wants create a world of evil Tachtainim and in this world we should, the Jews should transform the darkness to light and then you have a greater level of light than you had if he didn't create the world and this is what he wanted and that's the whole reason why Hashem made Simtsum which means according to this just extrapolated a little bit what the Altarev is saying is Hashem made all the tzimtzumim, tzimtzum arishin, and this, and this, all the, that one Jew should do one mitzvah. That's the concept, bishvili nivra ha'olam, not the way people literally take it, the world's mind, you know. Bishvili nivra ha'olam, meaning the whole concept of tzimtzum, helam, was created for me, the drama says, the Mishnah says, every person individually has to say that the whole reason why Hashem concealed himself in the world was for me because I need to reveal him. What? Is what the Alter Rebbe is stating here, is, is it incorporated, is it in concert with other sages, other times, other writings, or is it unique to him? This is Kabbalah. For all the it's consistent Kabbalah. Yeah. So and it does it is incorporated or it's in concert with other uh, writings of it's in concert with even the revealed part of Taita, yeah. Now uh, there there was a big argument if Tsimsum what is the definition of Tsimsum? Does it mean Hashem just removed himself from the world period? He's not here. Or he's still here. But there's, yeah. By the way, who, what's, who cares? No, I, I just... I'm asking you, who cares? I, I'll tell you what, I, I just wanted to... Therese Chayelu. This is the teaching of the Vashem Tev brought down into a level of Chabad through the Alter Rebbe. You want me to answer? Yeah, if you want to. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to know whether it's something unique to him or maybe just... No. Some, or is it well? He is bringing it down in an understood level. Right. That's all. Yeah. And many tzaddikim were opposed for human beings that have a warped understanding of everything to learn these things. Because I think to a great extent, it's because, because for people like me, to a great extent, it's a waste of time because it's a lot of time spent and very little absorbed. I mean, very little comprehended. In, in his all you life. need, all you need is one drop of the medicine. Right? In order to create a child, one place what of the seed that the father produces, the sperm, yes, is actually what catches on to the woman and creates a baby. You don't need a lot. You just need one drop. If the medicine is one drop and you internalize the medicine, that's the whole story with Al Trebu, with the you know, crown jewel. You grind it up and put it maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes, trust me, without this. It's on tape, but it doesn't matter. I'm not saying your name. Without this, you'd be much worse than you are, even though. Yeah. It has an effect. You can be a rabbi. <laughs> it could be. It could be. It's possible. He's very unique. No, really. This is without these teachings, the world would definitely be different. The teachings of Chassidus, okay, infiltrated. I'm not saying it, and I'm saying it in a good way. Infiltrated the world at large. That when even people that are called Misnagdim talk, they're talking aspects of Chassidus. That's right. Yes. 
because that came from the infiltration of Hasidic philosophy in the world, and everybody sees, wow, this is life. Yeah, but that's all from Hasidus. Without that, it, it, it wouldn't be. What? It is Kabbalah. This comes to the symptom is Arizal. Zoyar, Arizal. Yes, but the Baal Shem Tov was a re- revolutionary idea of Siddha Sarkoli that people opposed it. Because he revealed it. Because he came up with a new concept, for instance, besides the fact Ashkoch Pratis, that they disagreed with on every single leaf that, you know, every blade of grass. Number one. Number two, the greatness until then of a Jew was only Torah. If you didn't have Torah, you were below, below, below. And Baal Shem Tev came and said, a Jew is greater than Torah. But it's really a Medrash. The Medrash says the Jew is greater than Torah. But they said, and if yet, in, in fact, in the time of the Gemara, Amaretz, an illiterate, was spat upon in the time of the Gemara. If you look in the Gemara, in the fourth paragraph of Sachem, there's like two pages, I think, if I remember correctly, two pages about belittling and berating an Amaretz, how bad it is. How bad it is to belittle or to do, to do belittle? No, to be an Amaretz. How bad is to how bad it is to be an Amoritz? Yeah. Okay, they said you're sub-Jew if you're an Amoritz. Today, they say if you're not religious, there's too many people that say you're not religious, you're not a Jew. Correct? Even today. Okay, certain places, whatever. Yeah, and, and Hasidus, and Al Trebe taught and Balsham and and Arab is a Jew is a Jew because he's a Jew and that's even greater than Taylor. And when learning these my mom of Elul, the Melah Basada, it reveals the essence of the Jew which is even greater than the essence of Shuva, which is even greater. They talking about a simple Jew, every Jew. No, no, the Baal Shem Tev didn't. Dr. Rebbe did that in Chabad. Baal Shem Tev brought out to each individual Jew how great they are by making a bracha. The Baal Shem Tev used to go around asking people, Vos machst du? You know, how are you? Just that they should answer Baruch Hashem. Today when you ask somebody, how are you? They ignore you because they're busy on the phone. Let alone Baruch Hashem, how they don't say Text them. You have to text them, yeah. No, I mean, How are you? You didn't answer about a service in the Why? Specific? Did he finish the Maimah yet? No. Okay, so when he finished the Maimah, he'll ask me. And what is the advantage of darkness, a light that comes darkness? A light that comes from darkness. This is the will of... In other words, why ultimate light comes from darkness and that's what he wants? is not understood. It's, that's why he says, Nisava Kodesh Baruch Hu. Hashem had a desire, meaning it's not logical. If it's logical, it's not a desire, because then it's logical. Desire means it doesn't make sense, and I want it anyway. When the, all this concept was given to Moshe Rabbeinu, correct. Hashem is only revealing it. Everything in Torah, Everything in Torah has its time when it needs to be revealed. It's like AIDS. We have no medicine for AIDS. AIDS the Rebbe said that everything is AIDS. The Rebbe alluded to cancer. The Rebbe said uh, when before there was any Ill, that illness in the world, they didn't need a remedy. Illness comes. Now you need a remedy. Before COVID, they, didn't, uh, they still don't. But, uh, but the bottom line is, you know, until you have it, you don't need it. I, everybody asks, how can you be a religious Jew before Chassidus? So the Rebbe says in countless, countless sikhs, because in those days, 
there was an atmosphere of Kedusha in the home, there's an atmosphere of Kedusha in the shtetl, there's an atmosphere of Kedusha, you didn't need Chassidus necessarily to be a from Jew. Also, the but today, without of those people that, with all due respect, okay, to, to the world, those people that don't learn chassidus and are religious Jews, yes, most of the time there's no life in it. If they would be able to get out of it, they would be able. They would love to get out of it. Yes, they're from the Jews. They're from Jews. By some Jews, their from kite is only in the garments. If you don't wear the garment, you know what I mean? Then you're not a chassid. It's all in the garments, which is total external. So today, especially today, in order to love Yiddishkeit, so to speak, to keep Yiddishkeit, there has to be this life in it because if it's dead you, you, after a while you get bored you won't survive correct that's what I'm saying yeah. number yeah. one today I'm because those, those who be, be saying well if they are not really doing what the Hasidim doing they're, they're going I'm to not go. saying that but I didn't say that so you're putting words in my mouth <laughs> you're putting words in my mouth that's why we have shopping. first of all first of all I told you Chassidus already infiltrated the world. So there is this aspect of Chassidus all over the place. Yeah, but, but in addition to that, yeah, it's, it's possible. Mainstream, it's mainstream. But mainstream, mainstream, have the life of Teira Mitzvah you get oh. from the Nishama of Teira. Right? Teira has a body and a soul. The body is the revealed part of the body, the person, and the soul is the hidden part. In Torah, you have the revealed part, it's called Nigla, the Torah, Gemara, Shulchan Aruch, you know, and then you have the, the, the Nisham of Torah. Now, you can have a dead Torah. A dead Torah. You need life, that's the Nisham of Torah that puts life into Torah. Say Lachaim. Hi. 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 Hi.